what's up guys lord has in here back again with another video and today we're having a look at the oppo reno 5. i'm a bit late to the party actually i'm quite late this phone's been out for the last two three months now oppo pr sort of unprofessional but story for another day this here phone has been provided to me for reviews by joe's gadget garage click the link in the description to find out why your next phone should be from joe's gadget garage So where does the Oppo Reno 5 lie in the smartphone market? It's gonna set you back between 38,000 Kenyan shillings to 40,000. And this here is the baby brother to the Reno 5 Pro. I pulled up the spec sheets of both the Reno 5 and the Reno 5 Pro since I didn't have both phones uh, hands-on. And the differences were quite minimal. The differences came in build material for the body, the display, brightness and size, especially if I'm not wrong the battery size and a bit of differences here and there in the camera section. That then brings us to the design aspects of the Reno5. First things first, this has got to be, I think, the prettiest phone I've ever like, filmed. I like this um, chameleon type of effect going on with the phone when light hits it at a different angle and it's just changing color. On the side, the power button is highlighted in green that's an oppo signature over there you get the speaker grill the usb type c port the microphone and the headphone jack at the bottom of the phone headphone jack in 2020 okay and the volume up and down buttons on the left side of the phone with the sim card uh, tray at the rear is that chameleon effects and the camera module which we are gonna get to in a sec up front is a 6.43 inch amoled display 1080p resolution with a 44 megapixel punch out camera top left of the phone while we're at that let's talk about the display now it's pretty impressive this here is a 1080p 90 hz refresh rate that picks out at 750 nits not the biggest number in the game but it's pretty usable outdoors in bright sunlight and in settings you can tweak if you want the screen to give you natural colors or super vivid colors which i like i have super vivid both turned on with 90 hz refresh rate always the oppo reno 5 so far in my experience has been a good phone for watching netflix on the go youtube on the go and the phone uh, does sport gorilla glass 5 pretty impressive stuff the youtube hardware or software and what really sets these two phones apart in the camera department also i'm gonna throw in the samsung galaxy a32 to give you a perspective of how these two stack up against the cheaper brother and the galaxy s21 ultra to see how they stack up against the flagship brother in matters of uh, chipset and performance, the Snapdragon uh, 765G is what is powering the Reno5. Living with it and coupled with the 8GB of RAM, there is no issue in performance, okay? No issues in performance, multitasking, browsing, you know, switching in and out of apps. I've not experienced any issues or status in performance so far, okay? One thing I did notice though is how the phone by default has some apps especially social media apps locked onto RAM by default. I don't recall me pinning any apps or tasks to RAM, but I just found the phone pinning apps like WhatsApp, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram onto RAM, even my Gmail app, okay? I took it that it does this to keep those apps running in the background longer compared to the other apps. And while we're at that, the phone does keep bulk of the background running apps open, apart from games. I notice it will shut down games after say 10 minutes of inactivity and when you jump back into the game you have to restart uh, the game. This phone has got a 4300 mAh battery and it comes with a 65W SuperVOOC 2 charger in the box. 
2021 you have to mention that a phone comes with a charger in the box anyways i digress that 65 watt charger can get you from zero to 100 percent in 35 minutes i've intentionally not plugged the phone in to charge at night and woke up in the morning with the 20 percent left plugged it in took a shower had breakfast and by the time i was leaving the house say 25 to 30 minutes later my phone was at 100 percent now that we're done with hardware let's move to software experience on the reno 5. the oppo reno 5 in my experience gives me a mixed bag of feelings okay let's just back this up and um start with what uh, software features you do get to the Reno5. First, it comes with Android 11 straight out the box and Color OS 11 running on top of Android. I've not been a big fan, actually never been a big fan of the Color OS. I feel like it's too convoluted for me. It's too mixed up, too jumbled up. I don't feel easily at home with Color OS with how I feel with say Oxygen OS from OnePlus with Samsung's own UI. This phone has a personalization setting or option for every option you might want. Example, the always on display feature. You can tweak your always on display to display a message or maybe the time, and you can tweak how that message is gonna be displayed, the appearance, the color, the clock styles, what type of notifications will um, appear on uh, your always on display, what color they're gonna be, they fully expanded what you can do with always on display. I like that. I'll also give Oppo massive props for how they've fine-tuned their animations and transitions. Now, cap those smooth animations and transitions when you're switching up to app or maybe unlocking the phone or interacting with an app and that 90 hertz refresh rate, there's a different feeling um, to when you, you're interacting with apps here and there. Aside from the normal um, navigation gestures, we've got hand gestures to flip through pages of your phone, specific apps like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, maybe, with your palm. Pretty impressive stuff. Though I should mention, there's times it doesn't really work and it does have a steep learning curve. And I don't really, I have the feature turned on, yeah, of course, but I don't really find myself on the street, on the bus, in an Uber just going. Even when I'm in bed watching YouTube, I don't find myself through my Instagram. It's a fun feature, it's there if you want it. And uh, let me know if you'd actually use that feature. And how do you think you'd look in public waving at your phone? Like. Next, let's talk about the Oppo Reno 5's camera. Now, this is a huge thing, okay? Mainly because Oppo took the time and marketed this phone as the go-to smartphone camera. Here's the thing, okay? In use, it is a really solid camera. It's consistent, color accuracy is good, saturation levels are good. It does handle exposure pretty well. Nighttime shots are also palatable, though not quite there. That said, I do have a full camera comparison between the Oppo Reno5 and the Galaxy A52 dropping soon. So you wanna subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss that. But there are some issues that I did notice with this camera, okay? First is the beauty mode. You'll turn beauty mode off, but it's not really off. It's not 100% off. That was kind of a pain. Okay, and you're gonna see me talk about that a lot in the camera comparison with the A52. Kind of alters the natural feel and look of your photos. Next is gonna be, I'd say the gimmick features that Oppo threw in the Reno5. I'm talking about stuff like ultra dark mode. Come on, ultra dark mode. The, this is the thing, I have taken night shots with ultra dark mode and there was literally no difference between ultra dark mode and just normal night mode. Another might be issue that I noticed was the AI input in the Oppo Reno5. Here's the thing, yeah? The AI does step in to boost up um, the pictures you take, okay? It senses that that over there is a car, that's a tree, that's a pet, that's a building. It's gonna tweak the colors, the science, the dynamic range to fit the best shot possible for that object, okay? Sometimes it misses and you'll find it 
say overexposing um some subjects you'll find it really brightening some subjects in a bid to make them pop and that again backlashes to the loss of the natural feel makes photos look quite artificial all the same it is a solid camera the selfies are good okay though there are times where it kind of struggled especially in portrait mode also it doesn't support 4k um video recording from the selfie camera which is quite a shame because i do believe the oppo reno 5 does have good hardware that can do good 4k video and that then brings us to the conclusion who is the oppo reno 5 made for here's the thing yeah if you're looking at the oppo reno 5 it's because you've shortlisted a couple of mid-range smartphones okay and the oppo reno 5 does tick bulk of those boxes it takes the boxes in performance it takes the boxes in um everyday usage it takes the boxes in battery life watching movies on the go is pretty epic on the screen the sound the speaker setup on this phone is also good though it's just mono it does take a bulk of those boxes you really have to know what you want in the phone what compromises you can make for your option to go with either the oppo reno 5 or something else that said, I would recommend you picking up the Oppo Reno5 if you're looking at options from last year um, or previous years. The Oppo Reno5 is looking pretty good, pretty solid, and uh, an overall nice package. That's it, Lord Hazen here, signing out. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet. Share this video with your friends, drop a like. It really helps the channel, helps YouTube suggest this video to more and more people. As I've said, I've got a full camera comparison coming between the Oppo Reno5 and the Galaxy A52. So you wanna stick around for that when that drops. Comment below what your thoughts on the Oppo Reno5 are. Do you like the color? Do you like the design? Do you like the software? Are you someone that will wave at your phone when scrolling through YouTube or Instagram? Let me know in the comment section below. What are you most excited about the Oppo Reno5? And what are you not excited about? What might not make you pick up the Oppo Reno5? See you in the next one.